What am I supposed to do with this? I'm going to teach you. Hi everybody, thanks so much for stopping by the homestead. My name is Sarah from Living Traditions Homestead and today I want to give you the confidence to cut up a rabbit. Um, if you guys don't know yet, we have a whole series of videos about how to raise rabbits for meat. And I actually honestly think that rabbits are the most sustainable type of meat that you can raise on your homestead for your family. Uh, so your husband butchers a rabbit and he brings it in for dinner and he hands it to you. What on earth are you supposed to do with it? I'm going to teach you how to cut this up, okay? Well, the first thing that I want to tell you is uh, there is a big difference in taste between a wild rabbit and a domestic rabbit, and that is because uh, in a wild rabbit, gen generally you shoot it um, and all the blood stays inside of it. But in a domestic rabbit, when you, um, when you kill it, you actually have an opportunity to hang it and all of the blood comes out. So a domestic rabbit does not taste as gamey and you don't have to pre-treat it with like a salt water bath or some people soak it in a tomato juice or something like that. It's very mild and it tastes wonderful. So I'm going to get started and just, you know, show you this is what um, a skinned rabbit looks like. And the parts of the rabbit that you are going to use in your recipes are the back legs, the front legs, and then inside here is a really nice piece of meat um, in like the back. It's like the back. Uh, this flap here is the uh, what holds the abdomen together. And um, it's up to you whether or not you want to keep that on here, but generally I cut that off. The first thing that I'm going to do is to take off these front legs. And the way I do that, is I uh, cut down the armpit. I cut down the armpit and then I just keep going. Now this isn't connected in any way. See how that just slides off really easily? There's no like shoulder joint or anything uh, to pop out. So th these front legs are very easy. Uh, and I'm put that on my plate and that's why I start with the front legs because that's the easiest part. So I uh, cut on the armpit area and you can feel here that there's this shoulder blade there's a shoulder blade bone and you want to be cutting underneath that because you want to have that bone and the meat around there see how that just comes off really easily there see there's your first two pieces of meat and then the second thing I do is I cut off the bottom legs um, and I normally pop these as wide as I can before I get started and I'm just going to cut along this, I should use the right side of the knife, cut along here and I'm going to flip it over and cut along the back area, okay? And you can cut in a little bit and then I, I pop that joint which really helps I know it kind of sounds a little grody, but that really helps figure out where you can cut. And it's really pretty easy. And uh, rabbit meat is uh, very tender and easy to work with. See how beautiful that is? Look at how nice of a size of piece of meat that is. It's beautiful. Now this rabbit I uh, use just about a two and a half pound rabbit, which is typical size for what we raise on the homestead. Uh, these are uh, New Zealand California crosses. Both of that, both of those breeds are a meat breed, and the cross makes very good meat. They're also good just alone, just standard. We just happen to have those crosses. See? There you go. Another nice piece of meat. Okay, so I'm going to cut this belly flap off just because it exposes this gorgeous meat in the back area. You can keep this. Some people use it to roll things, you know. You can put some veggies or something and roll it up like that. I generally am not that fancy. Cut this off right up by where the ribs are. See that? Okay. So what I'm after here, 
I'm after this nice piece of meat right here. Now, I could just take this top portion off here. This is the ribs and like the chest cavity, and we're really not gonna do anything with those, um, but I do encourage you to save them and throw them in with your chicken stock when you're making uh, chicken broth or bone broth. But what I do to separate this is I feel in here for the very last rib, and I feel that the rib is right there. And I'm gonna cut in between the last rib and this area here, kind of at a at an angle here, up toward that spine. And I can feel inside there that there's a rib. I just don't want those ribs in there. I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. So you can see I have kind of a triangular piece in there. I'm just gonna double check and make sure I cut it all the way up to the backbone. Then I'm gonna pop the backbone. See? Just like that. And then that shows me where to cut the two pieces away from each other. See that? There. So that you can save for your broth, okay? Now you can just leave it like this. You don't need to do anything else if you want. But my preference is to kind of get rid of this um, hip area. There's kind of a hip area in here. You can leave it just like that. The meat comes down to here and then the rest of this is really just bone. And in this area right here, you can feel the hip bone. It's kind of at an angle right in there. You can feel that on both sides, it comes at an angle. And I'm gonna cut in between that bone and that meat at an angle, similar to what I did up by the ribs. See that? Right here, that's the bone. Okay. There's no meat there. And so just like before, see where that is? I'm gonna pop that. And that shows me where to cut the bone off and it pops it away from uh, the spine, the backbone. Okay, I'm just gonna clean that up. And there. So now in our family, we keep this whole piece of meat together. And generally in our family, our two girls split this piece of meat. But there are many people that will cut this piece into two pieces or even three pieces. Uh, so you can do that if you'd like to. It just extends the amount of pieces. But in fa our family, we keep it whole, okay? So after that little amount of work, you get five beautiful pieces of rabbit meat. And it's not that hard. It's intimidating at first, but once you get it, it is so easy and it's so worth it. And then you can really just treat these pieces like bone-in chicken pieces. You can throw these in any recipe that you would put bone-in chicken. It's that simple. So I hope that I am giving you confidence to be more sustainable, uh, to have the courage to raise your own meat and process your own meat and cut it up into pieces and feed it to your family. I hope that you like learning more about how to be more sustainable just like we do. We're here to help you. We're here to encourage you um, and to teach you some skills. So if you like this video, if you'll give me a thumbs up, I would really appreciate that. Comments or questions in the comment section, but most importantly, hit the subscribe button below. We would really appreciate it. And until next time, you guys take care and God bless.